So it's the second day of this floor project and I've gotten all the plaster, the, the earthen floor out. I'm down to the straw insulation and I'm just gonna haul this stuff out. I'm not even gonna bother trying to use it. It's sort of a mix of clay, sand, and straw that's left, but most of the bulk of the plaster I've actually, in the cob, I've taken out of here. So while I've been tearing out this floor, I've been doing this little test run of adding water to the uh, stuff that I'm taking out, the floor material. And uh, the reason that I wanted to test it was because there's different kinds of plaster in here. There's the subfloor, um, and then there's the surface, these finished uh, layers that have linseed oil coating on them. And I wanted to see if when I soak this, these end up not really dissolving and breaking down enough. And uh, just looking at the stuff, although there's, this is a little bit wet, I'm going to have to add more plaster to this. Um, but just looking at this, pretty much all of it's breaking down. That, uh, that linseed oil layer is soft enough that it seems like it's not going to be a problem. So I'll be able to lay this pretty, pretty smoothly. I think it's going to be time consuming though soaking all of this. So I'm going to try to get a, like a larger scale thing operation to soak it because it's going to probably take at least an hour after I add the water for it to get soft enough to bring in there and work. But this is the great thing about cob is that uh, you can just completely reuse it. Just add water and you're ready to go. And it would have taken me so much time to mix this up. I mean, originally when I did this, it took days and days and days mixing these small batches of clay, sand, and straw. I can only imagine what's going through Banjo's head. I think she's probably like, what are you doing? I don't understand why you humans do all these crazy things. Why don't you just hunt bunnies like I do? You just hunt the bunnies. It's that easy. You don't have to go through all these, like rebuilding your floor. So this is how I'm softening up this uh, old floor to uh, reuse it. I'm just putting it into this big barrel, uh, all these chunks, dumping water in it and letting it soak. And this mostly has been soaking overnight, so it's mostly ready to go. Just the top stuff is not quite soft enough. I got a little bit of the vapor barrier in. I'm sort of doing it in sections because I had the sheets are only like 10 feet wide, but um, that kind of works out for the way I want to do it anyways. I want to sort of gradually work my way this way with the insulation and the flooring. Um, but I got the vapor barrier down now and uh, got this perlite. The perlite, I'm not sure about it. Um, it's not really the kind of perlite that I had wanted to get. Um, which is the kind used in horticulture. This is a kind used in insulation, um, but it's mostly powder. It's very fine stuff. And so it's gonna be really powdery. It's gonna be really dusty. I just looked at this blog where they were showing a process of doing this and they actually just took these entire bags, laid them down um, full. Uh, but that's a little bit thicker. These things are probably like six six or seven inches thick and so if I did that I wouldn't have much of a floor on top of it um, and I also got enough to put like four inches of insulation down. We're gonna see how it goes though. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do to compress it. We'll just have to see what I can figure out and how it lays down. It doesn't seem like I put a little bit in a bag and I sort of squashed it and it doesn't seem like it compresses very much but it's de definitely gonna be very dusty. I know that much.
I did this first little section just to see how it would go and although this perlite is super dusty um, I put down put it down on top of the vapor barrier and then I put a piece of plastic over the top of it and I'm thinking I can even reuse the plastic that I pulled up that was originally used for the floor uh, to go between the perlite and the uh, the plaster or the cob. Seems like it's holding up pretty well. Um, I put this board down and I uh, stand on top of the perlite and it doesn't really compress that much so there's very little compression but it actually went down really easily. I just uh, you know laid down a pile of the of the perlite and then I used this to sort of shift it around. The water that I'm using for this project is rainwater, of course, that I catch off of my roof. And my cistern has been well filled this season because we've gotten a lot of good rainfall on a regular basis. Not like too much, but enough to refill the cistern every time it rains and maybe every couple weeks, which is just perfect. And here's a puppy dog finding some shade. She's confused. I don't think she likes this disruption. Right, puppy dog? You like things to be the same. You have been able to adapt to a lot of changes in your life, Banj.
right, so we've got the subfloor finished now, and we're just gonna let this dry for, I'm guessing it'll take like a week, week and a half or so. I'm gonna put the fan on it, try to get it dried as soon as possible. Um, it kinda depends because not every batch was exactly the same wetness. So we'll see what happens, but I'm um, hoping like this one will take the longest to dry, obviously, because it's the thickest layer. Overall, I would say that this went pretty smoothly. Usually here I expect things to take like 10 times longer than, than I would originally expect them to take somewhere else because it just seems like there's always things that go wrong. There's things that you don't know and I guess we still have the results of this subfloor to, to wait for, like to see if it ends up being firm and hard and it's not gonna crack everywhere. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect because it's the subfloor and the, the next layer we're sort of sort of fill in the imperfections but I'm hoping that there won't be a lot of cracking and that these larger pieces won't uh, shift and that would allow sort of spaces for cracking in the future floor when it's finished. We'll have the next step in the floor making process um, which is finishing up the floor in the next video. Um, so stick around for that and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share and give a thumbs up to the video, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.